Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build an automated conflict checking solution inside of Clio Manage. Whenever you open up a new matter, the system will automatically check all the related contacts on the matter against your database. If it finds possible matches, possible conflicts of interest, it will create a task for your team to review. Each task will have the possible match. For example, in this case, we have Sarah Thompson, which is the client on this new matter which is actually figuring as the defendant on this other matter number 68. Maybe the same person, maybe it's not. So we can click into the, into the task. We can see the other matters description and also the link. We can then follow that link and see if there's actually any, any conflicts over there and mark the conflict check result over here saying, maybe it's a different person. Save the task for record keeping purposes and then move on to the next one. The system will not only be checking the actual client on the matter, it will also be actually checking all the related parties on this new matter as well. For example, here we have Oakwood Realty Group, which is a company marked as a business partner on this new matter. However, we can see that it's actually figuring on matter number 67 as the main competitor of the client of this other matter. So again, we can go into the task, we can see the matter description, the matter link, I can see if there are any issues with this case. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a system just like this for your firm using the make.com automation platform. I'll walk you through step by step in terms of how you can build it and then also actually provide free templates for you to get started. Let's get going. My name is Martin and I'm the co-founder and CTO at Automation for Lawyers. For over three years now, we have been helping growing law firm owners make the best use of their legal tech tools like Clio. We optimize practices so that your systems help free up the time of your attorneys and paralegals instead of slowing you down. Before we dive deep into the implementation details on the actual make.com automation, let's first have a look at the general process and the approach that we're going to have to the conflict check. Now, obviously the trigger will be a new matter being created in Clear Manage. After that, we're going to look up all the contracts on that matter that will include the client and any other related parties that there may be on that matter. After that, we are going to have for each one of those contacts, we're going to have a search for all the contacts in our clear managed database with the same name. Again, could be person or could be company name. That search will result in uh, multiple contacts being returned. One of them will be the original contact that we were looking up. And then also any other contacts that we have in the system that have the same name. For each one of those contacts, we'll then search all the matters related to that contact, except obviously the, the one we, that we just created. That will return potentially again, multiple matters. For each one of those matters, we'll then flag it as a potential conflict by creating a task on the newly created matter with all the information as well about the other matters, such as the description and what is the relationship with, uh, of this contact to that particular matter. Let's actually look at a specific example to make sure that we are on the same page. For example, I've just created this new matter that I've shown previously, Thompson, right? Uh, if we go to the dashboard, we're gonna see that we have Sarah Thompson as the main client. We then have two related contacts, John Davis, a person that is marked as a business partner on this matter, and another business partner, but this time it's actually a company, Oakwood Realty Group. Whenever the matter is created, again, the system will look up all the contacts on the matter. It will return Sarah, John, and Oakwood Realty Group over here, and then do a search of all the contacts in our database with the same name, right? So for example, for Sarah, we have obviously this client contact, but then we also actually have another contact that is also has the same name, Sarah Thompson, maybe the same person, maybe not, it will need to be checked. But this, for example, Sarah Thompson is actually related to another matter. 68 Reynolds uh, figuring as a defendant. If you go to this matter, as you can see, we have uh, the, the main client is Mike Reynolds, but then as a related contact, we have this Sarah Thompson as a defendant. Again, that's a different contact. We're not sure if it's the same person or not. We'll then need to do obviously some checks in terms of you know, date of birth, address, etc., to make sure it's not the same person. As for John Davis, again, we have two contacts in the system, one being you know, the one from the newly created matter and another John Davis, again, could be the same person, maybe not. And John Davis actually is related to another matter as a client, in this case, 69 Davis. If you look at the 69 Davis, we can see that indeed they're figuring as a client 
And in this case, for example, it's a reverse case, right? So maybe if it's the same, the same person, actually there's no conflict of interest, obviously, because it's a different, uh, different practice area. But again, needs to be flagged. And finally, we have Oakwood Realty Group over here, which actually we don't have another contact with the same name. It's, it's just the, the contact itself over here. But that particular contact is related to another matter, 67 Skyline Realty, and is figuring as a main competitor over there. If we go to matter 67, we can see that again, as a client, we have Skyline Realty, but then as a related contact, we have this Oakwood Realty Group figuring out again as a main competitor. That will probably actually be an issue and will be a conflict of interest, meaning that we won't be able to take on the project. So again, that needs to be flagged as a potential conflict for manual review. Let's now actually have a look at the setup of the automation in make.com. If you're not a techie, don't worry, I actually created a template for this specific automation and I'll let you know how you can access it at the end of this video. Now the trigger of the automation will be a new matter being created. It's a watch matters module, define and make. When you open it up, you'll have an option then to create a new webhook. Just click add over here. And then you'll also be able to select what events you want to subscribe to. In this case, we just want the event of a new matter being created. We don't really care about updates or deletions. And then we also will need to define when it expires. Unfortunately, the maximum that you can set over here is one month from now. After that, you'll need to actually refresh, re redo the webhook. Not to worry so as well, there's a workaround it of how you can automatically refresh these webhooks. And I'll be releasing a video about that very soon on the channel. Now, the next step will be getting all the contacts related to the specific matter. Uh, there isn't a module that is already defined in, in make.com for that. So I'm actually using a custom API call over here, which is just again, looking up all the contacts of a specific matter. In the fields section over here, we are defining what information do we want to return about that contact. So in this case, we want the ID, we want their name, we want their type, are they a person or a company? We want to see if they are the clients on the matter or they're just one of the related contacts. And if they are one of the related contacts, we want to know the relationship. And the relation value will actually be found in the description under the relationship object, which will say, for example, that you know, this person is, a, for example, a business partner. No, no need to worry about understanding all the specific setup over here. You can just use the template and go from there. Uh, after that, after we have found all the contacts, we'll be iterating um, all of them. Uh, as we can see over here, look up all the contacts. We're going to be iterating the contacts and then after that, doing some actions for each one of them. So for example, searching all the contacts with the same name. In this case, we're just iterating the data that we got from the previous module. For each one of the contacts, we are going to be searching for contacts with the same name in the system. This is actually a built-in module, just search contacts. And what do we define? here is the query in the name of the contact that we are currently iterating upon. In terms of type as well, you can define if you just want to return, for example, if it's a company, we just want to return obviously companies. If it's a person, we just want to return uh, people, not companies with the same name. So you can also define it here in type by selecting this map value and then the pasting the type of whatever contact we are currently looking at. After that, we, um, as, as per the diagram, right after we have found all the contacts, we need to search all the matters related to the contact to see if you know, there are actually in potential conflicts of interest. Uh, in this case, uh, what we need to do is actually do two calls to Clio Manage. One, looking up if that contact is a client on a specific matter, and another one to see if they are related party on another matter. Unfortunately, we cannot do both at the same time. So that's why I have defined a router. Essentially, it will execute the first branch and then execute the second branch after the first one has finished the execution. So in the get and the matters over here, we are again using an, kind of a native module in make.com, search matters. The only thing that we're doing is then passing the client ID being the contact ID that we have found over here in the search context by name. That will return all the matters that uh, that contact is associated to as a client. Now, we also then have a filter over here to make sure that actually uh, a matter has, has been found. And if it has been found that the matter ID doesn't equal the matter ID of the newly created matter, right? Because obviously, again, this step will also return 
the same contact, right, as we have already on our matter. So we just want to make sure that it's, it's, it's not being triggered, the conflict check is not being tr triggered for the same matter, right? We only want to be look at different matters. So again, checking the matter ID over here to make sure that's not the case. If, again, a different matter has been found for that particular contact, then we are creating a task. We are assigning it to one specific user, for example, my key, myself in this case. For the naming, it will be potential conflict. Then the name of the, of the contact that we are currently looking at, right? And then if there are clients, we will mark them as client. And if they are not a client, we'll then mark them with whatever their relationship to the matter is, right? So that on the output, we are getting something like this, Sarah Thompson client, and then for example, John Davis business partner. Again, so that we don't have to switch tabs and you know, be constantly looking up their relationships. We just have all of that in one view over here in, in the tasks list. In this description, we are putting as well an information about the matters that we actually found. So for example, figuring on matter and then displaying name of the matter that we have just received over here as a client, right? Again, because we are only looking at the ones that they're figuring out as clients. The matter description, we are pasting the description from a previous module. And then the matter link as well, we are pasting the generic link that you would have in, in Clio. And then the ID of the matter that we have found. We also then add in this other line for conflict check results so that whenever somebody's actually reviewing those tasks, they can very easily then just fill it out and say if you know that conflict was resolved and approved or not. The due date will be now, so today. And then the matter ID will be obviously related to the matter that we just created coming from the first step. For the status as well, you can obviously define it to whatever you want. The priority you can define to whatever you want. And if you want a specific task, task type ID as well, you can define it over here. Now, what's important to mention is that these internal modules over here, search contacts and search matters, will be returned in multiple bundles if there are multiple contacts or matters found. That means that any steps after them will be executed once for each bundle, right? So if you have found two contacts over here, all these modules will be executed once for each one of those contacts. We don't need to be doing an iteration like we did over here, because again, it's an internal module and it's returning multiple bundles. The reason that we have needed to do the iteration in the case of the matter contacts over here is because we were using a custom API call and it was just returning one bundle. And so we needed to manually iterate upon them. All right, so we have then looked up the, the matters where they're related as, as a client. Let's now then also look up the matters where they are figuring as a related party, as a related contract to the matter. For that, again, we need to use a custom API call because the, there, there, there isn't a native module of Clean Manager that does that, of getting the relationships. How this works is uh, we're just doing a call to this relationships.json endpoint. And then we are passing in the query string, we are passing the contact ID of whatever contact we have found over here. And then in the fields, again, we are returning, um, defining what information we want returned about that relationship. In this case, we are returning the ID of the relationship, the description, which will say, for example, you know, business partner, defendant, etc. The contact information and then the matter information, including its ID, its display name, and the description, uh, display number, and the description of the matter. After that, we need to iterate these relationships again, because this is a custom API call, it won't return multiple bundles. And so if you want to look at each one of those relationships, we need to have this iteration step over here. And then we have a similar process before we're just checking that the matter ID coming from this relationship is not equal to the matter ID of the um, of the matter that we, that we just created. And then if it's actually a different matter, then we are creating the task, right? And in very similar setup as before, passing the name of the contact, uh, their relationship to the current case, and then figuring on matter display number uh, that we got from here, uh, as you know, could be, for example, defendant or you know main competitor, etc. as a description of the relationship. Again, the matter description, the matter link, and the conflict check result. The rest of the setup is the same as before. So now let's actually uh, run it and uh, see how it performs. So for that, we'll need to turn on uh, our automation. Let's first save it and then turn it on. 
I'll just delete the old data. And we can go back. Fantastic. Now the scenario is activated. Let's now head over to Clio and create a new matter to test it out. I have filled in all the details about the matter, so including creating a new client contract for Sarah Thompson. It's a developer seeking legal representation for a new residential project. And then in the related contacts, I put John Davis as a new person contact, as a business partner, and then Awkward Realty Group, that company already existed in our database, so I just connected uh, it directly, again, as a business partner. Let's click Save Matter and see how our automation runs. So the matter has been created, 70 Thompson. If we go back now, you can see that automation has been triggered. And actually, we have a look. One and then two, three tasks have been created for the conflict check. Let's head over to our tasks on the matter. And as you can see, we have then all of this information. Sarah Thompson has been identified as a defendant on this Reynolds case. Again, if we open it up, we can check all the information about it. Uh, we can go to that matter link. I already have it open over here. We can check that then if Sara is the same person, let's imagine they are not. So in here in conflict check result, we'll say different person. So actually no issue. Click save task and then mark it as complete. Let's go to the next one. Um, let's say John Davis over here. They are the business partner on this case and they are a client on this other case number 69. So again, we can go to the case and check if it's the same person. Let's imagine it is the same person, but in this case, they're just working on their divorce. So no conflict there. We can just say no conflict. And again, all of this information is recorded for historical purposes in case you need to reference it later down the line. Click Save Task, Mark as Complete. Then finally, we have this Oakwood Realty Group business partner. They are marked as the main competitor on this Skynine Realty matter. Again, let's open it up. We can go to the matter. Indeed, it is the same company and indeed they are the main competitor. So actually there is a conflict here. All right, so conflict identified, drop in matter, for example. Click Save Task and again, mark this as complete. And just like this, we have been able to automate a process that may take your paralegal maybe half an hour to do manually, looking up all those contacts and making sure that they haven't missed anything. Just like this, you have a streamlined process which populates those tasks in a new matter whenever it's created, and you can just very easily go through them and check them off. Now, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that there will be templates for this automation. Uh, indeed, as a case, you can access them by joining our legal automation community on school.com. Absolutely free of charge. Apart from getting access to all the past and future templates and videos, you'll also get access to, um, to myself and my team in case you have any automation questions that you want answered. And then also other law firm owners that are interested in legal tech and the ability to mingle with them and discuss any questions that you may have as well. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more and thank you for watching.